Cure 3 is pretty much the critical point when you can actually start pushing the Undead player. Um, reason being he's not pushing right now is because, you know, it's always nice to uh, not have the towers to deal with and without the little upgrade for the animal war training. Um, you're going to run into some HP problems, and if they match you and destroyers, you're pretty screwed. So, as I said, vicious paladin harassment. I mean, just absolutely vicious. Vicious. Um, really nice move there. If you saw that, he put down the, um, the robe of the magi, just so that he could um, use his mana potion and get a lot more out of it. He is kind of in the danger zone right now, though, so I'd be a little worried that he'd coil me. But that's just me. So, I guess since he's pro, I really shouldn't be debating this, but, you know, whatever. Um, I don't really know how many Acolytes he's killed in this entire game, but it's been about 12. <laughs> um, if you do want to uh, pay notice to this, um, his dragon hawks are getting the living crap beat out of them, just because A, they're not upgraded, uh, and B, they're not near his towers. So that's one thing to be wary of, is that when you're doing harassment, they can still kill stuff from your base. So always watch that and make sure that you're keeping your position properly. Um, so yeah, the one good thing about the panda is that he doesn't really rely much on mana, so, you know, he's got his low cost mana spells, which really kick the crap out of you anyways. So, it's always a good thing to make sure that most of your stuff isn't drunk and hazed. Always a good idea. Now, he is pulling up a lot of gold, but uh, the reason being is that he's not really at tier 2, or he doesn't want to go into low upkeep yet just because it's always a good idea to mass straight up to 80 food when you can. So, And he does have three griffin aviaries and an expo, so it's okay to pull that kind of money. Problem is he's going to spend a whole bunch of it on rebuilding his peasants that just got raped. Um, it's okay, though, because he raped a whole bunch of more acolytes. And for some reason, someone just banged on the wall. Whatever. Um, Blood Mage second. Obviously, um... Blood Mage isn't really at trouble because, you know, he didn't end up going with the uh, the Lich, as I said. So, you're pretty much well off to be able to do stuff with uh, the Blood Mage, uh, just because he won't get nuked. Only thing you really have to worry about is him being focus fired by the um, Chain Morph Destroyers. So Space is starting to um, to purchase the Fiends, but at this point it's kind of late because he's got that many dragon hawks that it's kind of not worth it um the one thing I do notice right now is that he doesn't oh he does have the animal war training upgrade so this is the point of the game where he can actually start pushing um and also when it gets cloud that means it's pretty much over just because they can actually run into your base and kill absolutely everything and by your base I mean the undead player's base thought I'd uh thought I'd clarify that so, once again, uh, not really effective nuking going on just because the coil doesn't really do much compared to the holy light. That was a pretty clutch save, though. So, really, you'll end up dealing more damage with your paladin and your blood mage, so it's all safe there. Especially when you have the staff, because, you know, they do all this focus fire, and yet they don't get the kill. Once again, impeccable save. Impeccable. I say lucky. <laughs> Just because. I don't care if he's pro. That was luck. The fact that it didn't die. So yeah, as I was saying, um, I didn't mention this, but he is starting to get griffins. And um, reason being, because he's starting to get fiends. Um, griffins are another option. I didn't really go over that. I don't really like them as much as the, uh, the knights, though. Just because knights do a lot more damage. Um, and they just keep better position for your blood mage. That's why... I that's why I use the dragon hawks or the uh, the knights more often. God, I'm so stupid right now. <laughs> oh man, and um, especially with uh, the paladin because you can use the resurrection thing once they've tried to rape all of your uh, all of your knights. So you know they do kind of take equal damage from destroyers. Thought I'd point that out, uh, but I guess the chain morphing does a little more damage in the end to um to your knights than it does your griffins. So, I like to keep my uh, my mobility factor. If they can't be webbed, you can still counter the fiends pretty easily. But as an undead player, it's so late to be getting fiends right now. 
generally when you see the first few dragon hawks, it's a good idea to start getting fiends because you're not going to be able to outspan them. Uh, it's just kind of an unwritten rule. So more acolytes are going to get um, raped. Actually, more ziggurats are going to get raped right now. But uh, the fact that he can't repair is still funny. Still funny. Um, gold mine collapses. General winding down of game. Really not much else to talk about, except as a human player, just important times to push are really when you hit tier 3 and you get the animal war training upgrade and, you know, your cloud. So pretty much when you have the upgraded dragon hawks, it's a good time to push. As an undead player, good time to get fiends is when you start seeing them to, you know, start seeing them purchase dragon hawks. Uh, just because, you know, it's always a good idea to counter what they're doing. It's supposed to wait for them to outspam you. Also, fiends are a great counter to towers anyways, just because they do the damage and they're ranged. Um, I know that was vague, but... <laughs> the fact that they're ranged is always a good thing, just because they, you know, it allows you to snipe down a whole bunch of those peasants a lot easier. And with the panda and the uh, death knight, you should be able to do enough damage to really take care of them. So, a good thing to do against um, a panda, especially if you have the money, is to get healing scrolls. It's one thing I didn't really point out, but uh, there are no real purchasing of healing scrolls right now. Um, you will notice that the fiend got raped, <laughs> like, pretty quickly, just because that was the first thing he focus fired on, and especially because he has pretty much fully upgraded dragon ox. First thing you'd upgrade um, is definitely the damage, just so that you can really kick the crap out of those destroyers and get those out of the way ASAP because they're really all that undead players like to purchase these days. So, you know, generally when you start harassing is when you hit level 3, um, like harassing their acolytes and actually going into their base and being ballsy in that manner. Um, otherwise, um, geez, what was I saying? Otherwise, um, it's a good idea to uh, prevent them from creeping and doing a separate creeping job. Kind of like the undead player would do to you. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but at the same time, it's awesome. Uh, just closing some stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of how to use that strategy. Timing-wise, creeping-wise, um, really this kind of, um, I don't know, you just use the basic creep patterns. Do a whole bunch of militia creeping, especially if you have too many peasants. Um, it's always a good idea to use those little buggers. They're good for um, they're good for damage output. Um, generally, the strategy works on pretty much any map, just because the paladin can be so much more mobile than the undead player um, with divine shield, because there's no way of stopping them from actually going anywhere, because you know he's invincible. And uh, with the boots of speed and the staff of teleportation, it's really hard for the undead player to keep up with you without their own staff of teleportation. So, you know, with the mobility factor and the fact that you can enter their base and they can't enter yours, there's always an advantage that you want to keep in mind. So, can, I'm going to uh, end the audio off here. It's a little shorter than my huge, but um, I figure since I'm doing two audios in a row, I wouldn't bore you guys to absolute death with my voice, even though I sound like shit right now. <laughs> oh, God. Um... Um, oh yeah, my next audio commentary might end up being a twos game, uh, a pro twos game, just because I'm cool like that, and I've had a few requests for it, and the fact that I can't really do my own games is saddening for twos, but I did put up a random 2v2 in the members audio section, I believe it is called Orange 2v2 RT, so, you know, go ahead and download that if you can, if you care. I guess um, I'm going to end the audio. So thanks for listening. See you guys later. Oh, I forgot to mention, you know, before I leave, that um, someone needs to rape Tainted Son, and I'm not going to do it because I'm too lazy. Thought you should know. <laughs>